Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? I hope y'all doing well, I am great. I got a good amount of questions and inquiries in the last few videos, anytime I featured these plants, Enough people have wanted to know about these plants that I thought, let's go ahead and talk about them. When I say talk about them, I'm referring to Pedicets japonicus, also called the Butterbur. They have a few other fun names. I have a mixture of plants in here. I have the variegated, which are the ones in here with the fun, pretty, colorful foliage, with that nice yellowy white variegation on them. That's the Pedicets japonicus variegata. And the other variety, it has much larger, more plain leaves, they get larger than the variegated ones do. Information's gonna be pretty much the same for all of these, and there's also the Pedicets hybridus, and it's still gonna be basically the same thing. There'll be some differences in their height, but that's about it. There are lots of different varieties with these plants, so there's gonna be some variation with the cold tolerance as well as their size. Like the variegatus, stay a little bit smaller, hardy zones five through nine, and then the hybridus, the other ones that I have here, those I believe are hardy all the way down to zone three and get much, 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 much bigger. Now, for starters, I mean, you can see they're a, an aggressively spreading perennial. Pedicis japonicus, these are hardy zones five through nine. They get anywhere from 24 inches tall, maybe up to 30 inches tall. There'll be some changes and some differences with what variety you're growing. Like shade to part shade, they can take some sun, but they will be wilty. They like nice moist soil. These are an excellent plant to have planted along streams or ponds. If you have a troubled area that doesn't drain very well, this is a great plant for that. They spread fairly aggressively though it takes them a few years to get going. Tolerant of most soil conditions, just as long as it does have a good amount of moisture in it. So don't let them dry out for too long. And they are deciduous. They're deciduous with a pretty long growing season where I live. These are one of the first plants to get going for me in the springtime. They put up really fun flower heads that come up right up out of the soil. There's still some left on just the regular green variety. You can see them right here, over here, and then there's still some more over there. They don't look as cool now. When they first start to emerge, that's when they look really neat. For me, those start to come up right around usually late February into early March. It's one of the first things I see in the garden. So they're fun and exciting. These get going when things are still nice and cool outside. They're not like a lot of other plants I have in my garden that don't like do anything until it gets really nice and toasty. They, I mean, it's just, what is it, mid-April right now? And they're already almost fully flushed out and looking spectacular. I've had these in the ground for either three or four years. I can't remember exactly when I planted them, but what I can say is wherever you put them, make sure they have room to spread because that's what these do. These are a great plant to put in an area that you, if you have a big area that you want to have filled in, these will do it for you, especially an area that doesn't drain very well or just a place where water tends to collect. They'll be so happy there. They seem to do best with morning sun and then afternoon shade. When I've grown them in other areas in my garden or in other landscape projects that I've done and they've received afternoon sun, then in the afternoon they will wilt down to the ground and then usually perk back up as soon as the sun gets off of them. But that's still, it's indicative that they would just rather they not have to deal with that, right? In the springtime, like right now, when temperatures are still more cool and mild, particularly at nighttime, the afternoon sun's not bothering them. They're underneath deciduous trees. So they start off their year getting a lot of sun, but once the heat arrives, like usually around, I'd say early May, things get pretty toasty out here, they will have much more shade on them. And then as the angle of the sun changes, depending on where you live, where I live, the sun gets lower during the summertime, so they don't bake quite as much and, or at all really, because once these trees are flushed out up here, they get a good amount of shade. Just some dappled morning light and then they can chill for the rest of the afternoon. And these are just getting started. This is just the beginning of their growth for this season. This plant will get, I'd say roughly two to three times the size that they are right now. So these leaves, they're already really big. That's already a really big leaf. It will get much, much, much bigger, probably about out to here into over there. And then they will be about maybe a foot or so higher. I think it'd be cool to show how well these grow and get a different idea of what they look like throughout the season. So I will finish off the video later in the video in like two and a half to three weeks. So you can see how much growing they've done in just that short amount of time. I particularly love the variegated variety because they help illuminate things at nighttime. They reflect all the light and make the area stand out. So they're great to have in the shade. So if you have a really dark shady spot, great option. If you want these, but you don't want them to take over, you can just take a pot, stick it in the ground, plant this inside that pot, make sure it's raised up about an inch or two inches probably above the soil level. 
just a little bit. That will help keep it contained so you can still enjoy it in the garden without it going absolutely nuts. They are pretty easy to control, at least they always have been for me. They lift out of the ground very easily, pretty shallow rooted, so if they start coming up in areas where you don't want them, you can just grab them and pluck them on up. It, they're not a type of plant where they're going to just start growing even more invasively just because you ripped them up out of the ground. But at least it's never been that way for me. They do have more of a fine, delicate leaf on them, even though I mean, they're, they look big and they look sturdy, but hail, rain, and just whatever comes flying out of the sky, it will go right through them. So I try to appreciate these as much as I possibly can before the storms start to roll in for the season and they get hailed on and just get full of holes. They're fast growing though, so even if they get some holes in them, not a big deal. Just cut that foliage off if it starts to look really bad and bothers you. They'll put up more leaves, they grow fast. I don't do any heavy fertilizing with these. I just come in here in the springtime, showed it earlier in one of my vlogs with the laurels, and I just toss in like plant tone, holly tone, whatever I have on hand. I toss that in there and make sure it gets watered in and that's about it. They're gonna grow their best in a soil that's more rich and organic. So what I mean is it's not a plant where I'm out here like making sure I'm with a hose and sprayer, giving them a drink once a week during the summer. Not at all. Pretty much it's just early spring. Then again, probably early to mid summer and I just toss the fertilizer and water it in. Pretty simple. Not very demanding. Now they do seem to attract slugs. That's the only thing I will say. And that's probably what a lot of these holes actually are. I wouldn't be surprised if there's slugs and snails because we haven't really had hail or we've had some heavy rain. We haven't, I don't think had any hail yet this year. So that's probably what all those holes are. And that can be controlled by going in with some like slug and snail bait and throwing that around in there and there there are tons of remedies home remedies things people do with beer and all sorts of potions and things people can put together to help control the slugs for a while i was convinced that they attracted mosquitoes but i think it's just that i planted them in an area that stays fairly moist so that's just an area that also favors mosquitoes a shady spot that stays damp it's mosquito heaven so i can't really blame the plants for that that's more just the area that they like to grow in right i've always considered these to be sort of a fun like tropical plant dupe they remind me of how when you see pothos spreading and taking over which isn't something that you want to happen but when you see that in pictures if you've been down in florida or somewhere in the islands and it's something you observe that's very much what this reminds me of. They're really fun, neat looking plants. Really actually maybe one of my favorite things I have out here in the garden. I just love something where I can just plop a few of them in the ground and then boom, they filled in with a lovely carpet and like I don't need to do anything else with that space. Now I did, I've mentioned in a few videos that I did decide that this has become a bit much for me. It looks beautiful right now, but come July or August when this is all about doubled in size, it's like, it's kind of intense and a little bit strong. And I had planted these with the intention of them coming up and growing up this slope up here. You can see the dog had a fun time over there on the swing. That's what these will do. They will come up and naturalize up there on that hill. I'll have to be mindful to make sure it doesn't spread into the neighbor's yard. But again, you just pluck them up. It's real easy to do. So from right around here and up, I'm going to let them continue on up through this area and put all their color up over there. And then down here, probably fill in with annuals and some other perennials, something that just stays a little bit smaller and isn't quite as extreme and loud. That was the other thing with them because they need that moisture and they're up here near this pavement which doesn't get terribly hot during the summer because again this really only gets morning sun during the summertime but because of that i do have this heavily on drip there's heavily on drip that's a weird way to describe it i have a lot of drip irrigation run in here because when it gets really hot outside i'm talking like into the mid to upper 90s it's hard to keep them hydrated and that makes the area less fun to hang out in because like i was mentioning mosquitoes right so i'm going to put something else in this area where people used to like to sit that i won't have to keep quite as saturated just figure if i talk about some of my troubleshooting with them and why i'm going to be moving a lot of these that might help someone help guide maybe in a direction as to what they may want to do with them because if it needs to stay constantly wet well they don't need to say constantly wet it's just it's when it's super super hot outside that's when it becomes problematic and it's just it's too many bugs all that heat and moisture brings and all the insects and all the critters and it is particularly important to keep these well hydrated during their first couple of years really the first year that you get these planted that's when it's really important do not let them dry out that season at least not more than you know like the top inch or so of soil that's probably okay they don't need to be in a bog but it's best to not let them get to a point where they would be doing any type of wilting or flopping you can get them really nice and established that first year then they will well, they'll do this. 
So hopefully that's what you want. Uh, like I said, there's also the container option. Like you can see I have a container sunk in the ground right here. That would be a good spot to put something like that pettis that's so that it wouldn't spread and take over. And this area over here is actually probably where that pettis is going to be going. because so it's going to be really easy for me to run a containment from the edge of the fence to right here. And then it'll fill in this area where nothing else wants to grow. So it's a really wet, boggy spot. The soil just doesn't drain well right here. And over here where there's a lot of sun, it'll just kind of self prune itself. It'll come out and get sizzled and just kind of, you know, die back like a vampire. I think that will look nicer with that slope and to have that color there. It just makes more sense. I'm also just now seeing all the dead stuff inside these arborvitaes. Huh. Hopefully this was helpful. It's not a plant with a ton to say about them because they're really pretty simple to grow. And I think it's pretty obvious that it's not something you want to put some place in your yard that you don't want to fill in, right? I mean, this is from five plants. I think I planted three of the variegated ones and two of the other ones. That's, that's what they did in just a few years, which I'm fine with. That's what I wanted. That's a good thing, but make sure it's what you want to. Okay, I'm back. It's been about two and a half weeks since I filmed the beginning of the video. I probably could have done this a different way, but as I was filming it, I was like, well, we'll give it a few more weeks so everybody can see how quickly these grow and what they do. I wanted to mention, I got confused in the beginning of the video with which varieties I have. I knew about the variegatus down there, the variegatus. Those definite about the other ones, I was confused because at one point I had had the curly Q and the hybridus in here. And the curly Q, I think lost the battle to the hybridus. I don't see it in here anymore. So the hybridus have really big leaves. See these? They've gotten gigantic and they'll get even bigger than this. The curly Q, to the best of my knowledge, this space in here starts to come up and twist. Kind of like so. See that? Very similar appearance, but the hybridus, which is what the ones in here with the solid green leaves are, those are going to get much, much, much larger. The website, Brian's Botanicals, where I got them from many years ago, says seven feet tall. I, that's what it says on there. I don't, I've never seen them get that big here, but I mean, they get bigger every year. So, I don't know, we will see. What are some of your experiences with the pedicets, with the different varieties, maybe you've grown them? Comment down below. I love talking to everybody. They're such neat looking plants. And I really, look at how much growing they've done. That's another thing. Mixing these together was fine for a couple of years, but these right here, they're pretty big. And they are very much going to probably overshade out the variegated ones below. That's another reason that I'm gonna be doing some pulling and some plucking and some rearranging because I want to have both in my yard. Such fun, cool plants. They also remind me of, I should have mentioned earlier, similar to the, what is it, Ganera? Is that what they're called? I, it's a plant I haven't heard anybody talk about in a long time because they really don't like hot climates warm summers like really warm toasty summers so it's not something that's ever sold around here but they do have a very similar appearance not going to get as big fun beautiful foliage and these would be even prettier if we could get some heavy rain you can see right now they're full of seeds from the birch trees that are up above them and they're pretty dusty there's a lot of pollen that settled into these. It's just been like misty. We need some heavy rain to get things washed off here. So much fun. I love these plants. Oh, and I didn't talk about the toxicity with these because the information online was really all over the place. There are a lot of things talking about their medicinal uses and fun things you can do with them saying they're great for migraines. And then there are a good amount of other things saying like could cause hair loss and liver damage and potentially cancer. So I was like, you know what? If I don't have a source, multiple sources that like just or straight to the point and they're like, yeah, it's safe. I'm not gonna recommend it, right? So that's, I'm just gonna suggest maybe you don't need it. I don't know, you gotta do your own research there, I'm sorry. I would actually suggest that with any plant that anybody talks about and they say that it's safe, it's a good idea to do a little bit of extra research and dig through the internet as much as you can to like actually find out that the plant is safe to eat or to have around pets and children. Ugh, I'm sorry, it's always awkward when I can't just say it's toxic or non-toxic, because then I gotta do the whole explanation thing. I don't know, that's what it comes down to. <laughs> yeah, like I said, comment down below. Love talking to everybody. What are some of your experiences with the plants, tips, tricks, suggestions? 
always appreciate it. So I add to the conversation, you know, get our plant nerd on together. I really am like getting to a point where I want to come off here and wash these leaves off. They're so dusty and dirty. They just have to do that if we don't get some heavy rain here. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.